Now, America's decision to station its forces in the Philippines as part of its new Asia strategy is now threatening repercussions. The state-owned China Daily called on Beijing to enact economic sanctions against Manila after it invited in U.S. troops in reaction to an escalating territorial dispute. Well, to discuss this latest development, let's now talk to Dr. Pat Nong Wong of the Chinese University of Hong Kong. Thank you very much for being here with us in the program, Mr. Wong. So. The dispute's been going on for yes. a while now, but why would the Philippines invite American troops, which as we know, they kicked out a decade ago, back into the country now? Yes, I think there should be three levels of analysis uh, to try to understand how the Philippines sees the matter. At the, at, at the international level, the Philippines know that the U.S. is definitely returned to Asia. Refocusing its military and security deployment in the Middle East in Asia Pacific, targeting China and Iran as the primary security concerns, right? Now, at the regional level, the Philippines also see that there's uh, recent changes in the regional politics, particularly in Taiwan, when Mr. Ma Ying-jiu and, and the Kuomintang administration was successfully re-elected. That means Beijing and Taipei would have a more stable relationship, especially in terms of economic integration across the strait in the coming years. And the Philippines knows that, that the U.S. would need a more reliable ally in the Asia-Pacific region. So the Philippines is willing to lend its hands to, to the American ally for that kind of particular security concern the U.S. is having in the Asia-Pacific region. Now, at the national level, I think uh, the Aquino administration has been uh, trying to get support and get protection from the U.S. for two major reasons. Number one, during the former Arroyo administration, Arroyo government has been working more closely with the Chinese government in terms of political and economic uh, and trade relationship with the Philippines and, Thai and China. Now, after uh, President uh, Benino Aquino has stepped up as, as the president uh, in 2010, he reverted this foreign policy direction and tried to side with the U.S. in order to balance the internal uh, influences of the Arroyo uh, faction. Number two, as the Aquino family has a stake and interest in uh, oil refinery and, and petroleum exploratory business, right? And I think it is at the interest of the Aquino family to side with the U.S. and trying to work with the U.S. on exploring oil resources in the South China Sea. Whereas the, uh, the Arroyo faction has been working with China in which they signed an agreement in around year 2005 and trying to have a joint exploration for oil resources in South China Sea. So I think the Philippines is all doing that to trying to balance and trying to get internal political supremacy on the other hand. And on the other hand, the Philippines is trying to get the best interest from from this China okay. and U.S. relations. Yes, Mr. Mm. Wong, that is clear. But given the you know security concerns that you mentioned earlier and the complexity of the situation in the region, how does this sit with Beijing, with China specifically? I mean, as it all seems like it appears there's nothing China can do in uh, this uh, particular situation, especially in its own neighborhood, kind of, without the approval of the U.S. What are your thoughts? Yeah. Now. I have already noticed there's tremendous pressure from the uh, public opinion within China that asking and urging the Chinese government to have a very tough position towards the Philippines. However, I think the Chinese government should be a bit more careful about this uh, internal demand. Now, I think the Chinese government should continue to just try to observe the situation as it is now and not to be provoked easily. Number two, I think the Chinese government is trying to continue to work with the uh, traditional allies within the Philippine Senate, Congress and the Philippine society to try to find some uh, creative uh, proposal to try to work out that. Now, why the Chinese government should work with those allies within the Philippines is trying to balance the influences of the uh, Aquino administration. Number three, I think the Chinese government should continue to look for 
creative and alternative ways to try to open dialogue with the Aquino administration, especially his family. Right. Now we need to understand, especially the Chinese government, to study carefully what does the Aquino family really want from China, what China can really offer and what China cannot offer. To do that so that China could try to understand the situation better before it plunge itself into a kind of tension and conflict with the Aquino administration. Okay. Dr. Park Nong Wang of the Chinese University of Hong Kong, thanks very much for your thoughts here on RT.